Hello YouTube and welcome to Danger Zone Plays RimWorld, a new series that I'll be starting today where I play the game RimWorld, a colony simulator. Um, so I apologize if my voice is going a little bit. I've filmed like uh, this is my fifth time filming the first episode. I've run into non-stop issues with both the video and the audio, but hopefully this will be the time. Uh, my audio, my video may cut out because it seems like when I start the game, when I like actually start or land on the planet and stuff, my video stops. I'm not entirely sure why, but if that's the case, then I'll just break the video into two parts that I'll post all today. Today is Saturday. I'm going to try and post it today, but if I'm not able to post it today, I will post it on Sunday. Anyway, once again, welcome to RimWorld. It's a colony simulator. It's uh, kind of like uh, Banished, if you ever played that, or uh, uh, Prison Architect. But Prison Architect... Uh, and, and the art is really similar to Prison, Prison Architect, I believe almost to the point, or I think it's almost the same, where they actually had to ask permission by Prison Ar Architect that they could use the same art. But um, kind of like that, Sim Builder, uh, survival game, uh, a lot of influences kind of from Firefly, so if you're a big Firefly fan, I would definitely check out this game. Uh, you can get it on Steam for $30. Uh, that may seem a little steep to some people, and I, I was definitely in that boat initially. I wasn't sure, because it is still, I believe, an alpha build, but it's incredibly polished. I haven't run into really any issues at all. Uh, the game doesn't crash. N no problems. Um, so I, I would definitely recommend it, and like I said, I was in the same boat, but once I bought it, I fell in love with it. And it sounds like most people feel the same way, that they were a little um, uncertain about getting it. For thirty dollars, but once they got it, they ended up falling in love with it, and it's incredibly worth the price point. There's so much content; it's very well made. The soundtrack's beautiful, so I highly recommend it. Anyway, um, why don't we get started? So we'll start with a new colony here, um, my fifth new colony. We're gonna do Crash Landed today. Uh, the three of you awaken your crypto sleep sarcophagi to the sound of siren, sirens, and ripping metal. You barely get to the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. Sometime later, you land on this unknown rim world. Uh, your faction will be a colony. You'll start with three people. Now, there's two other modes, the Rich Explorer and the Lost Tribe. But I'm not going to do those because I'm hoping these videos will kind of be tutorial videos for people. Um, if you're interested, if you just started playing the game and you kind of want to know more about it before you start building your colony, I'm hoping this video can help you out. Uh, the game really doesn't tell you much and it kind of just throws you into the chaos and uh, you... You don't necessarily know what's going on until you play around with it for a little bit. And I've been playing the game for about 10 hours now. My colony's been doing pretty well. Uh, but it is a difficult game, so you're gonna, like, it's never gonna be super easy. Uh, I mean, maybe if you put it on easy mode it will, but uh, it, your colony's gonna struggle. And I think that's how it should be. I mean, you're trying to survive on a uh, unknown planet and uh, with very few materials in the beginning. Um, but I think it's super cool. And, and the goal, the end goal of the game is to uh, relaunch your survivors uh, back into space, or your colonists back into space, so presumably they can head, uh, continue on their journey to whatever their their original destination was. Um, but I haven't gotten to that point yet, even in my private playthrough, so uh, I'm still not 100% uh, sure how, how we go about that. Um, but I do hope to, to make this an ongoing series, um, especially if people like it enough, and I would because I would love to show people both uh, early game and late game, and hopefully send some of our own colonists into space. Um, so anyway, let's hit next for this. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, uh, it does have open Steam Workshop, so you, uh, as mods comes out, as mods and different things come out, you can add them to the game. So the game is uh, controlled by an AI storyteller, and as it says here, the AI storyteller creates events like pirate raids, resource drops, or animal attacks. Their choices will affect the story of your colony. Um, so here we have uh, the AI storyteller Cassandra Classic. Uh, she creates story events on a steadily increasing curve of challenge and tension. Then we have uh, Phoebe Chillax. Uh, Phoebe gives lots of time between disasters to relax and build your colony, but beware. If she set it a high challenge scale, she'll hit as hard as anyone. And then last but not least, we have Randy Random. Uh, he doesn't follow rules, he generates random events, and he doesn't care if they make a story of triumph or utter hopelessness. It's all drama to him. Uh, so if you're into kind of chaos and complete randomness, uh, he's the guy you're going to want to go with. But for the sake of my videos, so they're more uh, on tutorial-esque, um, I'm going to stick with Cassandra Classic here. And I'm going to go with the rough setting, uh, or difficulty. 
Uh, I've been playing that in my private playthrough. I find it to be the right setting for me at least. It's challenging enough, but hopefully we won't uh, my colony won't be dying over and over again. You won't have to see that kind of thing. I will not be playing permadeath as I don't uh, For the sake of my videos uh, I, If my entire colony dies, I'm just going to probably reload. I mean if it happens a lot, maybe I'll uh, Start a new colony, but I do want you to be able to see the early game and the late game And if my colony keeps dying, that's not gonna be possible And on top of these being uh, tutorial games, uh, hopefully maybe just help people who are interested in the game make up their mind or introduce people to the game who have never even heard of it. Um, so here we uh, choose our seed. Let's just, uh, I'm just gonna go through here. All right, uh, William, let's do it. Works for me. Um, so size, uh, in my private playthrough, I've been doing 300 by 225, but for this, I'm gonna do 350 by 262 because I would like a little bit bigger of a map. I don't know how much big of a difference or how much of a difference it actually makes, but hey, whatever. So here we have uh, uh, Tarzet uh, 15. Tarzet 15 is going to be our planet today. So as you can see, there's multiple colors here. Uh, these are the different biomes that we can end up in. Um, at the very top, we have the ice sheet, which has uh, no growing period and is super cold in winter at negative 63.25 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. I'm going to be playing in Fahrenheit instead of Celsius. Uh, I do live in the United States and we do go by Fahrenheit here. I know it's an incredibly stupid system. We should be on Celsius um, because mathematically it makes way more sense, but uh, it's what I'm comfortable with, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so if you live somewhere else in the world that uses Celsius, my apologies. Um, below that we have the tundra. Still very cold, no growing periods. By the way, if you're right on the ridge between the colors, it will kind of uh, give you a mix between the two uh, different biomes. Uh, this uh, beige color here um, is desert. Uh, it's growing periods of the 11th of spring to the 1st of fall. Um, and the temperature is a little more moderate. Um, and then this more aqua color over here is going to be our boreal forest. Uh, the boreal forest has growing periods between the 11th of spring and 1st of fall. And it obviously changes a little bit the closer you are to uh, either temperate forest, which is this green biome, or to the uh, tundra, which is the more kind of uh, lighter aqua blue color. Um, and in the boreal forest, uh, we also have summers that you know are more temperate, uh, 63 degrees, and we have cold winters at 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, temperate forest is kind of uh, the most temperate area. Obviously, you have good summers, you have longer growing periods of first of spring through the end of the fall, but you still need have to deal with cold winters. So you're still going to have to be planting your crops to hold you over through large portions of fall, or a portion of fall, portions of spring, and all of winter. Then as we get farther down in the biomes, uh, down here, this brown, we have the um, the arid shrubland. And uh, that has a growing period of year round, and it's going to be warm year round too. So you're going to have to deal with that accordingly. And each biome is gonna create different types of gameplay, uh, depending on which biome you are, and then also it's gonna, uh, your priorities are gonna change too on, on what you need first. Um, and then at the very bottom here, this dark green, we have uh, uh, we have tropical rainforest year round. And I, I'm kind of wondering, because uh, my private playthrough has been in boreal, uh, boreal forest, uh, but I'm wondering if like tropical rainforest, you know, obviously there's gonna be deficits. I, I do know that in uh, like uh, arid shrubland, you don't get as many trees. So wood is not going to be as abundant and you're going to have to rely much more on mining or other resources to build structures. We're in the rainforest. I would assume there's plenty of trees, but maybe chances of getting disease and things like that are much higher. I'm not entirely sure. And then uh, there is one other biome. I'm trying to see if it's even on here. Uh, this is desert... Maybe I'm just missing it all together. There's also a golden color biome. It doesn't look like this planet has it, but on the golden color biome, that's extreme desert. And that's just another one. Uh, temperatures are high. Uh, I'm assuming there's very little foliage and uh, you're probably gonna end up with, I think it still has a short growing period. And also uh, it looks like the growing period is switched where you have to be growing in the winter and not the summer. Okay. So I'm gonna click select random site, but I'm probably not gonna put us in Tundra or the ice sheet because it has no growing period and it's not gonna be very, these videos aren't gonna be very helpful if I can't show you how crops work. Um, so here, 
Uh, it always gives me Ice Sheet first. I don't know why. Maybe it just works its way down. So we could do Arid Shrubland here. Or we could do Tropical Rainforest. I haven't decided which one. Um, in one of my previous videos, I did Arid Shrubland. And I think that could make interesting videos. But honestly, you know what I'm going to try? I'm going to try rain for, rain for, Tropical Rainforest out. Uh, Temperate Forest. Because uh, I, I, I think each one brings its own difficulty. Um, each biome. Obviously, some have winters, which make it more difficult. Others have low resources. And I'm interested to see what the difficulty of Tropical Rainforest is. So I figure uh, we could try that out. So let me let me scroll in here a little bit so we can see where we're going to land. Okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put us right in there. I think this, this could be an interesting area to, to be in. So why don't we just land right in there. Uh, it has a year-round growing period. Rainfall is a lot, so maybe that's going to be something that we're going to have to deal with. There's a lot of rainfall, plus temperatures are high year-round at 88 degrees. It's very warm. Uh, so that could make it more difficult because you can see here the high is 83, but winters you at least get 59 degrees. But up here it's like 70 degrees. So let's go right in here. Uh, 82 is the high. Winter temp is 62. So average temp is 72 degrees. Not too bad. Um, Honestly, I want to give myself a little more of a challenge. So I want, I want to put us in this warmer area. So let's do this. 88 degrees is summer. Winter is going to be 70 degrees. Um, but there's going to be a ton of rainfall. And it's very mountainous. Uh, stone types, granite, and slate, and growing periods year-round. So let's, let's do this out. on. Uh, so we'll land in this area on Tarzet 15. So we'll select the site. Okay, now comes uh, character creation. And this is an incredibly important part. Um, and obviously, like, when it comes to the biomes, you're welcome to hit random, end up wherever you want, or pick where you want, depending, you know, if you want to try out a different biome, like I'm trying rainforest, tropical rainforest here. Um, they all seem to have a different set of things that make them difficult to live in. Uh, which is cool, because that adds uh, so much more gameplay. Uh, okay, so... Obviously, we need certain skills uh, to benefit us in the early game, and we want to have a well-rounded team of colonists. You can ran you can uh, randomize them and see what different things you get um, each time. So off the bat, we have Patty Bell Holder. She her childhood she was a scout. Her adulthood she was a VR designer. Uh, she's incapable of intellectual dumb labor and artistic. So those are stats that she will never be able to participate in. It's a little rough because. Uh, I mean, intellectual and artistic, I mean, we can live, live without if somebody else has them, but dumb labor is something that's helpful, and so it's going to suck we don't have that. She, is, she has chemical interests, which means she'll consume more of things like alcohol and uh, drugs and different chemicals that uh, benefit her mood. Uh, she's heat tolerant, which... Uh, she's heat tolerant, which is nice. Uh, that could be very benef beneficial in the rainforest, and she's pretty. Um, she's good at shooting, and she has an interest in it. She isn't amazing at social, but she has an interest. Four medicine, eight construction, growing six, mining four. Honestly, without artistic and research, I could live without it because she's pretty good overall, and she has interests in a lot of different other areas, which means, which means she will uh, uh, be able to increase the, her uh, level at a higher percentage. So then we have Naoko. Uh, and Naoko, shopkeeper in adulthood, a human computer. So her research skills are insane at 13. That's super good. Um, she also is very interested in social. But honestly, I mean, we need higher stats in areas like uh, growing, uh, cooking, medicine, and things like that. I'm not going to get rid of her just yet. But she's also cold tolerant, which isn't going to benefit her much in the jungle. And she's a pessimist, which uh, she looks at the bad side of life. And mood is incredibly important in this game. It will make or break your colony. And uh, it can cause a whole bunch of different scenarios if their mood is low. From uh, them going berserk and attacking other colonists to just hiding in their room and not being productive. The other person we have is Kane here. Um... So Kane is good at shooting, good at melee, but he cannot. 
Oh man, he cannot learn any medicine or social, so he's not super gonna. He also has an annoying vo voice, I guess? But he does have a green thumb, thumb, which means his growing skill is good. But honestly, Belle right here, her growing skill is about the same, so I don't see too much uh, use for him. So we're gonna randomize here. Okay, so we have uh, Jennifer here, who has 13 in medicine. That's super beneficial. She's not good at shooting, she's not good at melee, so she's not going to be very helpful defending, which is a problem. She can't cook, and she can't craft. She's trigger happy, though. She's industrious, uh, so she stays focused, but she is greedy. So she needs to have an impressive, uh, impressive room, plus she can't do dumb labor, crafting, cooking, or firefighting. So I'm going to say we're going to randomize here again. Uh, okay, that's way too many things that he cannot do. She's a cold lover. She doesn't like heat. So I don't think we're going to want her. He's cold tolerant, but he's volatile and neurotic. I say we switch it up again. Uh, okay, here's someone who seems to be good across, but she can't do firefighting, cleaning, or dumb labor. She's also a slowpoke and a brawler. But she's good at cooking. She's good at medicine. Um, ah, man. We already have someone I think who can't do dumb labor, right? Yeah, she can't do dumb labor. Or artistic. She can't clean, but that's not the end of the world. Plus, Noako Galvin. Oh, it's a guy. I'm sorry. Pyotr. Pyotr. That's how you say his name as I butcher it. Uh, his wife is Noako here, um, which means they have a social boost. But that could be bad if one of them dies. Uh, it could really uh, be a negative... Uh, buff towards their mood. Oh, man. Do we have anybody artistic? I mean, kind of artistic. Can't be artistic and can't be artistic. Uh, no artists, but artists aren't... Not having an artist isn't the end of the world. However, though, he is a zero at shooting, but he's really good at melee. But he's good at medicine. He's good at cooking, construction. He can't firefight. He can't clean. He can't do dumb labor. Oh, man. These are some negatives, and I could switch it up some more, but honestly, for the sake of the game and the recording, so you don't have to watch me sit here forever while I go through these, honestly, it's good enough. Uh, the characters give us a challenge. Also, you get a fourth you get a fourth colonist pretty quick for free. Um, so, you know, maybe we'll get someone who will offset uh, not having any artistic skills um, and having two people who pretty much can't. Actually, both these people can do research, so we're only using one that can do research. So, you know what? I'll say it's good enough. Um, and, you know, we can try out this relation and see how it works. So, Naoko and Pyotr are... Um, I'm just going to name him Peter for the sake of my pronunciation. Uh, that will just be the name I read off. Uh, Naoko and Bell. Okay, so let's go with these guys. I think, honestly, it's good enough. So I'm going to be careful here. This is usually where it stops recording. So I'm going to try and, and keep the recording going here. And we're back. Uh, the recording stopped again, but that is okay. Uh, this time I planned for it a little bit better. Uh, I probably am just going to merge the videos because this time I was ready for it. So hopefully I can get everything lined up audio and video wise. So anyway, uh, I apologize for uh, the moment of silence, which probably occurred. But anyway, um, so we are about to land on the planet now, so I'm gonna hit okay. Uh, this says the same thing as before. Uh, we wake up from our crypto sleep sarcophagi, the sound of sirens and ripping metal, the ship breaks apart, and we make it to this planet. As pieces of the shredded star starship fall around you, you start making plans to survive. By the way, um, these videos are probably gonna be about 30 minutes long. Uh, today I'm probably just gonna try and get through day one and then I'll end the video there. Okay, we are in the jungle. I Maybe there's dangerous animals in the jungle too? I'm not sure. Okay, so let's pause it here. And let's see what what we started with. So uh, at least uh, material-wise, you always start with the same thing that was listed earlier when we picked this mode. But um, you do start with an animal every time, and that animal can differ. So today we have, or for this uh, seed, we got a female Yorkshire Terrier, which is awesome. Dogs are trainable. Um, and this dog can do release, rescue, and haul, which is all good. So release is like attack, uh, rescue, rescue people, and then haul, uh, haul goods. So that's that's something good. Uh, it will bond with a particular owner, and then we will make that, or with a particular person, and then we will make that particular person their owner. 
So first, first things first, uh, let's see who has the best shooting. Okay, Peter, you're melee. Um, so Bell is our best shooter. So Bell is going to take the survival rifle. Naoko is our next best shooter. So she is going to get the pistol. And um, Peter here is a melee boss. So we're gonna have him take the knife and we'll try and get him a better melee weapon later on. Um, okay, so we have these goods. They have these red X's on them. You basically just need to highlight them and you need to remove the, you need to make them so that the uh, colonists know that they can grab them and store them places. We just wanna make sure we do that. Also, let's zoom out and take a look. Okay, this is an interesting map. Uh, it's very mountainous which could be to our benefit. I'm liking this down here. Ah, man. Okay, so there's these walls I've noticed that are like built into the side of the mountain. And what you'll find out is if you go near them, it says ancient threat. And it says the colonist feels uncomfortable near that wall because uh, something uh, ancient lingers there. And anyway, uh, it's no bueno. Uh, I don't know what it does yet. I have not encountered... I did not encounter that problem in um, in my private play. Uh, so maybe we'll find out how we deal with it here. However, this looks like the... This area in here looks like where we want to be. Um, I don't... Let's see what the minerals are here. It's slate and granite. Um, mainly because we can fortify ourselves there. It's gonna be really easy to build a wall and protect ourselves. I don't know what this is, um, but I'm kind of wondering if we don't build on it, if whatever it is will leave us alone. Which actually, we don't even, uh, you know what? We don't even have to go all the way down there because if you see here, they can't enter this way. So as long as we put a wall here, we are safe, which is pretty awesome actually. Um, that makes defending ourselves way easier. Um, so first of all, I say, first of all, what we want to do is because it is a little bit of walk. Um, so first things first, uh, go to zone an area and you need to put down a stockpile zone. Uh, mainly I say do this because they are going to need to haul this, in, uh, this stuff somewhere and that's going to be in your stockpile zone. I'm going to put our stockpile zone, where am I going to put it? I'm going to put it right here. Am I going to put it right there? I'm going to put it right here. Well, you know what? Actually, I kind of want my colony farther away from where our wall is. I'm going to try and put our colony in here. So let's have our stockpile zone right here for now. And we're going to not make it too big because we're going to have to deal with heat. And we're going to want to try and refrigerate this. And the larger it is, the harder it's going to be to deal with. We can expand it as we need it. And um, I'll kind of explain that more as we get farther in. Uh, we also need a dumping stockpile. I'm going to put that down here. Uh, we don't... We don't want it near our colony, mainly because, uh, uh, like I said, mood is important, and that means aesthetics uh, play a really big part on, or are a very large factor in people's mood. And uh, everything you put in the dumping pile is bad for aesthetic. Uh, I'm not super well versed in beauty yet. Uh, I think it's something that in the late game you deal a lot more with, um, but we will get there uh, as we go farther in this playthrough. So let's. Okay, so we have that, and then the next thing we want to do is start getting a structure built. We need um, we need places for them to sleep. Um, and I'm trying to see where. Okay, so that's where our stockpile is. Um, basically, what I want to do is I kind of want to build into the mountainside. Like I'm going to mine this out, and we're going to build a colony within there. So our stockpile's right there. I'm going to say the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start building houses. Or the first thing we need to do is we need to build a structure for all our colonists. Uh, it likes to auto put it in steel. Make sure you do not use your steel. Steel is incredibly important and it can be difficult to find. I don't know how hard it is to find in the jungle, but it's very hard to find in the boreal forest. And you need it for much more important things than buildings. So uh, we're going to build our structure right here. And maybe we'll use the wall to our advantage. Actually, never mind. So I'm gonna do this uh, six by six by six is what I'm gonna build their homes at. Um, which I actually do right there. Okay, so six by six. Um, and the reason I'm doing that, so I will build them private rooms. Uh, that's something I'm gonna do. Uh, some people say just doing like public housing is better, but or uh, mass housing is better, but. Uh, 
Honestly, it really is a mood buff. Uh, if they have private rooms, it's something a lot of them prefer. Now, I've heard some crazy things like you need eight by eight rooms and stuff, and those are ginormous and take a ton of materials and space. So I don't necessarily agree with that. Oh my gosh, is that a panther? That is a panther, and I'm definitely going to try and tame that at some point. I'm sure another one will cross our path. Um, so yeah, that's going to be uh, kind of... So I'm going to build single houses. I think it's the way to go. I don't think they need to be eight by eight. So I'm quickly just going to um, get everything queued up here. We're going to do all wood. Some say just do dirt floors in the beginning. I'm going to put down wood floors. I just think it's important. And then we're going to hit play and see what happens here. Um, oh, the other thing we need to do is this work tab, and it's incredibly important. High priority on the left, low priority on the right. Now, I like to do manual priorities. Uh, this lets you set it one through four. Um, and the reason, oh my gosh, can only one person cut plants? I guess that's because it's uh, dumb work, and dumb work is, or dumb labor, and I guess that's plant cutting. So one person is gonna be cutting all our plants for us. That's gonna be difficult, but we'll make it work, I guess. And only one person can haul. Oh my gosh, hauling is dumb work. I was unaware of that. Well, anyway, boys and girls, uh, it's, I guess watch out for that. Uh, dumb work is something you want people to be able to do in the beginning. Uh, but you know what? Uh, I. I will make it work and hopefully the next uh, colonists we get will be able to do some dumb labor because we have uh, two people who are very snobby uh, and the two people are Bell and Peter are very snobby and do not want to help haul anything. Okay, so um, first things first, set construction to one on all of them. We need things built now. Uh, who's going to be our doctor? I think Peter, yeah, he's an IF-20, so I'm going to put him up one. Firefighting should always be a priority. We do not want things on fire. So construct, uh, and that's where we, where we want to start. So let's have them do that. There's only going to be one person who can carry all the stuff over there, and that's Naoko. Uh, so Naoko, before you walk over there, I really want you to prioritize hauling some of this stuff. They can't haul wood or chop wood down, for that matter. So, you are going to be... Actually, don't know why I can't select this. Hold on. Oh, no. Is Peter our, the person that hauls? I'm sorry. Hold on. I'll get used to all this. Haul. Oh, Peter's hauling. Well, maybe hauling wood is not, a, not the same thing. I don't even know why I can't have Naoko set it. Anyway, that's fine. Naoko's vomiting everywhere, but that's normal out because of the uh, sleep sickness that will go away with time. So we're gonna speed this up. Uh, there seems to be all kinds of creatures. Wow, there's bear, or, oh, there's capybaras, and there's monkeys. There's a cassowary, so kind of an Australia-esque jungle here. Australia mixed with that, because I think, don't capybaras live in South America? Or maybe they do live in Australia. I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, okay, our house is coming together. They're all constructing. I think we have good construction skills, if I remember correctly. Uh, 8 out of 20, 1 out of 20, not very good, 4 out of 20. So the 8 out of the 20, Bell's going to be our big constructor here. Uh, mainly, you want someone to construct good, because every time they fail a construction, it can waste resources, and that's not good. Uh, obviously, more so, oh wow, there's elephants. Can we train elephants? Oh my gosh, that'd be so exciting. Like I said, I mean, there's so much more in so the biomes bring so much gameplay to this game. There's so many differences. Like I said, I'm, I'm incredibly surprised by all the animals because the areas I was in before, you had like caribou, bears, and elk, and that was about it. Oh, I think we had boars also. Um, okay, so our house is built. That was very fast, awesome. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to start getting beds in there. Uh, Okay, so we go to architecture, we go to furniture. I'm gonna build one double bed. We're not gonna build it out of steel, because that is a waste. We're gonna build it out of wood. Um, and I'm gonna build one double bed, because this will be one person's room, and the double bed is the best one to have. And then we're just gonna build two temporary uh, wooden beds, uh, single wooden beds in there. I think only one person will, will uh, sleep to a double bed. Unless maybe they're married, which... Yeah, maybe we only have to build one room for Nako and... Hold on. 
So I thought, I thought we had a bonus because I'm clicking on all the wrong things. Okay, Peter, you are Nako's wife. But you and Patty are getting along, along pretty well right now. And because and she's pretty, so that's good. Hopefully that doesn't cause any issues. I like cheating or something. I don't know if that's a thing that's in this game, but hopefully there isn't. Uh, hopefully we don't run into an issue where people start cheating on one another. Um, anyway, so they're they're married. Okay. So maybe they'll actually only need one bed. Maybe they'll sleep together. We'll find out. I wonder if they're married if we can have kids. I don't know if that's a thing or not. And if it's not a thing, it could become a thing. So we'll see. I don't know how common updates are on this. I thought this was alpha. Maybe this is official now? I'm not sure. Um, also, the other thing you need to do is you need to go around. You need to, like I said before, get rid of all these X's. And the thing is, though, is you need to look around because things can land uh, quite far away from your pods. Um, that you don't necessarily have to go and collect. But, you know, in the early game, it is important to have as many resources as you possibly can. Uh, given to you, so I just like to make sure. Okay, cool. So we're actually gonna be kind of near all these other uh, survival packets uh, Meal packets. So anyway, the beds are getting built now Which is good because the nighttime is coming Okay, so we have that uh, we have our uh, stockpile zone set up uh, Nako seems to be stargazing or watching the sunset I guess um, Okay, so the next important thing Especially for places if, and, and, I'll, and I'll try and add this so I can help you in places that have other biomes. Uh, but in other, in colder climates, you have a growing period, obviously. So you need to get those crops planted usually by the first day to the second day. I mean, the second day you're fine, but you're only going to be able to have one harvest because you almost always land. Well, I thought you you always landed at the beginning of the summer, but it could be different because uh, I keep landing in the winter. Um, for at least my past two plays, but that's been in warm climates where I can grow all year round. So uh, it's not a huge issue that we, uh, you know, start growing immediately, but I do want to start growing immediately. Uh, food is important, and we are only going to be able to survive off those survival packets for so long. So I would say the next thing we want to do is we go to zone an area and we do growing zones. And I'm going to put them right up here. I think this is a good area. Um, and I'm probably gonna do like seven by seven zones. Um, I'm just gonna have all of this be like, oh, okay, so that's not fertile ground. So that could be an issue. Um, first of all, that one, I'm going to delete that zone. We don't want one zone. There's that zone. Oh man, these growing zones are very hard to see in the jungle. Okay, so uh, potatoes, we'll grow potatoes. Potatoes, good. Um, I guess because we don't have to worry too much, but let's do corn. It's another good one. And we're gonna wanna do one more. The issue is I can't see it. Is this seven by seven? I don't know if it is. Uh, let's do rice. So we have two potato zones. And we have, yeah, that's not seven by seven, but that's okay. Uh, we have corn zone and we have rice zone. Uh, so we'll start with those as our staple crops. Uh, the thing is too, is like you can grow more, but you need to have certain stats. So like to grow heal root, you need a min skill of eight. Um, which actually, ring. Do we have anyone with a min skill of eight? Ooh, I thought I picked someone who had better growing skills. Um, okay, but a six is fine. Uh, we'll get that up pretty quick. Growing is another priority right now. So I'm gonna click that as a priority. The other thing we wanna do is we wanna give them light. So if we go to furniture, you can add torch lamp. I'm gonna add torch lamp in this room. So that is important. Lights helps uh, buff their, their mood. Uh, it looks like people are cutting down plants. Bell and Peter. I don't know where Nako is. Now Nako's gonna start. Uh, is gonna build that torch lamp for us. 
There we go. And it looks like she's gonna head on over and start chopping down trees. Well, I thought it said in here they couldn't do that. Cannot do this kind of work, cannot do this kind of work. Well, they're doing that kind of work, so... Maybe it's just a buff at the beginning of the game. They'll do things that they don't usually do uh, to get the colony moving. Alright. So my video is about 35 minutes here. I'm going to stop the video here at the end of the first night. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. It helps out a lot. And if you'd like to see more like this, please hit subscribe. Um, if you have any uh, pointers or tips or comments about RimWorld, uh, please leave them down in the comments section. I'm going to be trying to post uh, one video every single day uh, with also my Dead Space uh, playthrough. I will continue that. But I'll also be uh, trying to post one of these every single day too. Um, if this doesn't get posted today, which is Saturday, it will hopefully get posted tomorrow, which is Sunday. Uh, and I'll probably post two videos if that's the case, if it didn't get posted today. Um, yeah, that should be everything. So uh, once again, thank you so much for joining me. I greatly appreciate it. And I hope, you see, I hope to see you here in the Danger Zone tomorrow. So I hope you have a great weekend and a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.